Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Grow with Google. Use YouTube to grow your business. We are so grateful that you've made time to attend this webinar and are super excited to bring you valuable trade secrets and industry insights. Today, we have with us David Lee, who will share with us how to create and organize your own YouTube channel, add videos, and stream on YouTube Live, and work with video ad formats. As we all know, that in a post-COVID world, content is king, and there is huge potential for small businesses to channel the right audience for their products. But at the same time, it has become more crucial now more than ever, especially in the face of relentless competition, to make sure that the information you are sending reaches the right audience in the correct format. At AdmirAsia, one of the leading multicultural ad agencies in the United States, we're all about connecting our audience in ways that are unexpected, fresh, and keeps them on their toes. Whether it is web design and development, creative direction, visual design, copywriting, production, talent management, or conceptualizing and providing end to event management solutions, including building live stream platforms from scratch and real-time community management. At AdmirAsia, we do it all. I'm Yashika Dutt. I'm an associate creative director with AdmirAsia and the author of Coming Out as Dalit, which recently won the Sahitya Academy Yuva Puraskar, which is among India's highest literary honors. Admiral Asia and USP ACC share a history that spans decades. We have collaborated on several projects, most recently, including Live Talk, when we worked together to conduct Race Relations, a national conversation on race at the crucial moment of anti Asian hate and the protests against the killing of George Floyd in early 2020. And also we are collaborating on the upcoming celebration conference. Now we turn to David Lee, who is a business consultant, a creative producer and a digital marketer. David has worked in the marketing and advertising industry for over 10 years. And he has been recognized by the NJ Ad Club for his extraordinary commitment to marketing. He was awarded the 40 Under 40 Award in 2019 and has experience working with global brands like Pirelli, Nissan, TD Bank, and Bayer, top agencies like TBWA and Omnicom Group, as well as 200 small businesses and startups and tech companies like LinkedIn. Let's give him a warm welcome. But before we begin, a reminder that David has graciously agreed to answer a few questions from the audience at the end of the session. So if there's something that you'd like to know more about, feel free to ask in the chat. Over to you, David. Thank you, Yashika. That was awesome. Uh, <laughs> hey, everyone. Uh, welcome to our uh, part one workshop uh, where we're going to learn about how to set up your uh, YouTube channel, as well as uploading a video to YouTube for your business. Um, and as I'm going through the different steps and instructions step-by-step step on how to create your channel, as well as upload a video today, uh, we're gonna spend a few minutes uh, you know, answering questions. So feel free to use the QA, uh, Q&A section of the Zoom channel to um, pose your questions, and then we'll answer them at the end. Uh, also, um, if you do, have uh, multiple tabs open. I know sometimes this is a workshop that's during the midday and uh, you might be doing emails and, and whatnot, but uh, if you're really interested in setting up your Google, uh, uh, sorry, your uh, YouTube channel, uh, you can do it along with us. Um, I'm gonna take a steady pace going through the steps to set up the channel and then also uh, show you how to upload a video. So. Uh, feel free to do that, but if you want to, you can also take notes. Um, there will be also replays uh, after this uh, in a couple of days, so uh, fear not. If you think I'm going too fast, you, there's always going to be a recap. Um, so without further ado, uh, today's workshop, as you see on the screen, is use YouTube to grow your business. Uh, and we're very fortunate enough that uh, Grow with Google program is really catered to the small businesses who are looking to use Google 
uh, services as well as tools to really better their online footprint, right? Uh, I've been in business for over 10 years and I always tell clients that video is a key component in how you market and promote your services and products. So if you haven't done so in the past, I highly recommend you guys to get on to the YouTube channel and really promote yourself. Um, why are people on uh, YouTube? I mean, uh, here are some quick stats. Um, over 250 million hours are played each day. Uh, most of your shoppers, uh, about a third of all the shopping that's going online are people looking at uh, reviews and then also uh, display banner ads as well as other uh, product videos on YouTube before they make the purchase. Uh, a lot of times people are doing DIY. Um, you know, they're trying to build their own uh, toy or tools or, or whatever. Uh, so YouTube is actually a really great channel to uh, really facilitate those uh, learning uh, sessions. So today, um, we're just going to go through creating your YouTube channel as well as uploading a video to your channel. And then uh, stay tuned or register for part two of the workshop that's going to be on October 28th, also starting at 3 o'clock Eastern, uh, which will talk about YouTube Live, and promoting your business with video ads. Uh, and then we'll also share resources on how to help you better your YouTube channel uh, marketing. So create your YouTube channel. Um, for some folks, it might come off uh, super easy. For other folks, it might take a, a, a few you know, um, steps extra to get you started. Uh, one of the things that you do need is to have a Google account. Um, that's if you have a Gmail, you're, you already uh, started the process, right? So uh, all you have to do is go to youtube.com, right? Um, this is the typical homepage you would see. Uh, if you haven't signed in, sign in. Uh, and from there, you can quickly start creating a channel. So right here on the top uh, right-hand corner, you're able to select create a channel and get started. Um, YouTube and Google, um, all these different websites make it very intuitive as well as easy uh, ways for users to create an account and start actually producing content. From there, you're going to select um, how you want to name or brand your YouTube channel. So for, for today's purposes, it's really um, catered to your business. So it doesn't matter, doesn't matter if you're a doctor, construction, restaurant, or even a digital marketer. Um, you know, you want to share your logo, you want to share your uh, business information, you want to have those things ready uh, before you start this process here. So logo, if you have your uh, company photos or a, a logo that you have, this is a perfect time to start loading those in because that's going to be kind of your storefront for your YouTube channel. And then, uh, like I mentioned before, it's very intuitive. Each page is going to prompt you to add those things into your channel profile. Write a description. What is your business about? What do you want people to know about you? Um, if, you know, typically it would be something about this is the service or product that I provide. Uh, you may include links. Right. So down here, you can also include your social links. So if you have a Facebook page, a LinkedIn profile, a Instagram profile, you would want to include these links here because a lot of times people uh, prefer different channels. And when they come to your YouTube channel, they see, oh, OK, they have a Facebook. I, I spend more time on Facebook, but I came to your page because of an all product video or a product demo. So. Um, it's always best to keep these things fully filled out so that your uh, customers and your audience um, are able to connect with you better. And then this is where you start customizing your channel, um, where uh, a lot of times when you see a lot of the influencers or content creators that are on YouTube, uh, most of them have very vibrant colored backgrounds, banners, uh, as well as profile images. So. Uh, this is where you can get really creative. So 
uh, feel free to start customizing your channel. By customizing, customizing your channel, uh, you will also start seeing the different sections. Um, what we have here on screen is the YouTube studio, right? This is your dashboard of how to uh, display your videos to your audience. Uh, a video spotlight is kind of like the first video you want people to see. Maybe it's an introduction to you and your business. Uh, maybe it's your latest product, right? So when someone goes to, you know, ABC company YouTube channel, uh, I land on your channel uh, profile, what should I see first? So that is a great way to kind of showcase to people what you want them to see first. And then secondarily, you have feature sections. Feature sections are a great way to kind of highlight maybe you have multiple products, multiple services. Maybe you want to highlight your employees. Maybe you have a client testimonial. Um, those are all feature uh, videos that you can put into different sections. So it's easier to organize, but also easier to view. Again, we mentioned about profile pictures before and then a banner image. Uh, these are things kind of like your curb appeal, if you will. So when you're conversing with uh, potentially other YouTube channels, um, this is what they get to see. So feel free to use uh, either your company logo, maybe it's just you're a solopreneur, you want to use your headshot here. Uh, you don't want to just leave it as a, a letter character because a lot of times that look, gets looked over and also people tend to think those are uh, bots. So uh, when you have a face to the name, people recognize you better. Also, they will engage with you. Um, then we're going to talk about banners and then also uh, the channel. Uh, descriptions and the name. So all these things, typically, uh, we come to the table ready. Um, if you have a business, obviously, the channel name would be something to reflect that. Uh, this description is like, what service or products do you offer? Uh, any of the links or contact info that you want your customers or audience to know, this is where you will want to put it in. Uh, so we're at the end of this uh, workshop, I'm definitely going to switch gears a little bit and show you Glenn, who's the creator of DIY Creators. Um, this way you can actually see uh, the examples of all the step-by-step -step things that we went through, like creating a banner image, profile image, video spotlight, all these things in a practical uh, manner. But these are all the main components. It's really simple, like we see here. Uh, we try to keep things clean, uh, focusing on just the brand or your business name uh, and easy to read, right? So uh, this is one example that I'll show you later on as we sh uh, shift gears to a browser and show you uh, Glenn's uh, YouTube channel. So what we talked about before, feature videos, and then also grouping these videos into different sections, right? So say, for example, if you're a restaurant, maybe you would do your appetizers as one uh, playlist. Maybe you would do the entrees as another playlist. So this is a great way to organize everything so that um, you know, your audience can actually follow the story in each section. All right. So that's your channel kind of set up, uh, very straightforward. Uh, feel free to use the chat function if you have a question about setting up your YouTube channel. Um, very straightforward. My recommendation is always to have your uh, ducks in a row, right? Um, if you have your logo, if you have your description right up, have that ready so that when you create it, it's a much smoother process and then you're not going back and forth. Um, those things that we mentioned before, like banner images, um, you can find the templates online, just Google YouTube channel banner dimensions. They'll give you a template so that if you can design it or you have a designer to design it for you, then you have everything that's within the YouTube uh, channel specs. Um, so everything fits and looks really good. All right, so next up, we're going to create and add videos to your channel. This is where it's the fun part. So in the past, uh, a lot of times, even when I was creating videos 10, 15 years ago, uh, I thought, wow, I need a professional camera. I need the special lighting. I need this, that, and other thing. Uh, lo and behold, now we're in 2021. Um, 
we are looking at uh, a lot of folks that are just utilizing um, regular camera phones, right? Your iPhone or your Android phone. Um, a lot of times people don't need special, additional special equipment, right? Um, so we have one poll that's up right now. Uh, if you're in the Zoom uh, video right now, please uh, check it out uh, about uh, the information about uh, creating your YouTube channel. So that's gonna be on for a couple of minutes. Uh, and then we're gonna discuss about the different video concepts, right? So prior to you actually uploading videos to your YouTube channel, we always think about the production of it, right? What do you wanna showcase? We briefly talked about if you're a restaurant, maybe you wanna showcase the appetizers or you wanna showcase the entrees. Maybe you have a customer testimonial, right? Those are all different types of stories that you can kind of showcase on your YouTube channel. Um, the purpose of the video, right? Obviously, you know, a photo is great, but how many times we, we uh, you know, go to a restaurant and we see photos on a menu and maybe that doesn't really match up to the food. So a video is a more compelling way to show off the food, maybe show off how the food is prepped, maybe show how well it's being received by customers, right? So it adds multiple layers to just having a regular photo, but just a lot more story behind it with video. Um, and then the videos themselves, you can be the host or you can just leave it to the subject, right? Whether it's food, maybe it's art, maybe it's machinery, maybe it's a car. Um, you can be just the voice behind the video. You don't necessarily have to be in the video. Uh, I know some of my clients are very shy in front of the camera. So I always tell them, you don't necessarily have to be uh, you know, the host of the video. You can always be behind the video, talking about a particular subject or uh, talking with someone, somebody else. Um, here are just really quick, easy, best practices to follow uh, when you're sharing. Definitely have a clear, concise message. So if you're focusing on one particular subject or topic, follow that through uh, on the video. You don't want to kind of have a description or a video title and then you know go on a tangent. <laughs> you want to make sure your title matches what the video is about so that your audience don't feel like they've been, uh, what you call it, clickbait. Um, so clear, concise message, uh, make a strong impression in the first five to 15 seconds. Uh, in today's world where attention is key, um, you don't want to start off with just, uh, uh, you know, music or anything that's going to look uh, static. Um, right away, you want to kind of jump right into the topic or uh, showcase a really high quality video so that people are intrigued and want, want to continue watching that video. So you have about five to 15 seconds to grab their attention in the beginning of the video. So make sure it counts. Um, and then deliver a compelling call to action and also maybe an offer, right? So if you're offering a service, whether you're a lawyer, maybe a realtor, um, the call to action might be at the end of the video, hey, call me, um, let's set up a meeting. Oh maybe uh, shoot me an email. Those are all different types of call to action that would um, engage the audience to do something, right? Um, so for your business, you definitely want to call them out to either contact you or visit you at your retail store or email you, right? Those are all different ways to um, develop that call to action in your video. Now, when you're going to shoot your content, these are some things to remember. Uh, space. Right? whether you're shooting outside, inside, maybe you're in a studio, right? So always think what the people are going to see both in front of the camera, but also maybe in the background, right? So if you're talking about food, you wanna make sure the table is clean, maybe, maybe not shoot. Uh, a lot of times when you have the plate on the edge of the table, you're shooting the floor and the floor might not be clean. So those are some examples you've gotta think of when you're uploading videos to YouTube. Um, you always want to make sure you have them branded, right? Um, you want to make sure that if someone shares that video uh, and they don't have the description um, and they're just watching the video, they know, oh, who shot that video? Oh, where is that from? So it gives them clues on, okay, if I really want that product or that food, 
where do I go to, right? You don't want to just shoot a piece, um, you know, a, a piece of content uh, in regards to maybe a, a service or a product, but then it's not branded, right? You, you don't know who shot that, but then the customer or the audience uh, would have to do some detective work to find out. So you don't want that to happen. You want to make sure you showcase your logo, your branding on those videos. Um, then goes to lighting. Uh, it's important to have well-lit uh, videos um, to make sure that, you know, it's not too harsh or not too dark. And when I say too harsh, uh, you might have seen this before. Um, sometimes when you're shooting a video outdoors and it's super sunny, uh, you're going to get what we call hot spots, right, uh, on anything that's reflective. And then it kind of draws the attention away from the, the, the subject matter or what you're trying to convey, the messaging. Uh, people are going to focus on more of the production of your video versus the actual material that you're trying to convey. So always try your best to use natural light. Um, always be careful of shadows. Uh, and then also face your source. And what that means is um, you don't want uh, the light to kind of be direct on the face. Uh, you you want to make sure that you have enough coverage so that you're uh, coming through crisp and clear. Uh, also for sound, um, you know, use a dedicated mic. Um, a lot of the cameras today are very great at picking up audio. So um, if you can't get a separate mic, uh, anything that's like a GoPro or even a professional DSLR are pretty decent in picking up audio. You just uh, want to make sure you're not too far away from the camera uh, if you're doing something outdoors. So always make sure that the audio is coming in clear uh, prior to uploading. All right, so once you have your channel set up and you have your video kind of, you know, either you're thinking about creating your video uh, or you have a video that you wanna upload, this is how you would do it. So you would go into your channel and then on the top right-hand corner, uh, next to your profile image on the top right-hand corner, you're going to see a button that says, upload video or upload content, right? So once you have that, this window pops up to create or select a file from your computer to upload. Now, you're not done there. You're, you still have a couple of sections to go through uh, just to make sure that you have all the necessary um, things, things I call uh, descriptions or text in order for other people to find your content, right? So sections like title, description, um, even having a thumbnail, right? The thumbnail, as you see here on the right-hand side of that um, uh, window, is something to grab the people's attention, right? So for example, if I'm looking up uh, bicycles and I'm, you know, scanning through YouTube of all the different bicycle videos, who am I going to click on? Something that's going to grab my attention, right? And that's the thumbnail. So make sure you also have a decent thumbnail that is going to be uh, grabbing people's attention when they're scrolling through all the different uh, video tiles that you see on the YouTube channel homepage. Um, description, it's really important to kind of give people details. So for example, if it's a uh, bicycle shop, and you're showcasing one bicycle, you wanna maybe include details, features and functions of the bicycle. Um, a lot of times people watch the video and it's great, but then they wanna know the other details instead of sliding back and forth in the video, you wanna put that into a description section. And this way it's also uh, improving your keywords, right? So, you know, if you're a bicycle shop, uh, you know, Google, is gonna deem your video, oh, it's about this type of bicycle. Oh, it's a, uh, you know, whatever bicycle shop in what city. All that is getting pulled from the description section as well as your title. So the title is usually accompanied by the, the thumbnail. You wanna make sure it's a compelling title. You don't wanna make it too long, but you don't wanna also be clickbaity. So what that means is you don't want to tell people to trigger them to uh, watch one type of subject matter, but then really showcase something else, right? You want to be authentic as much as possible and descriptive as much as possible. So if I'm looking for a three-tier wedding cake and how to make it, this is my go-to video, right? You see the title right there, how to make a three-tier wedding cake. So 
this is a really great example of that. Um, then that video, you want to see, okay, where does it belong in your YouTube channel, right? We see here the playlist. The playlist, um, you can create a playlist that's you know, three three tier wedding cake playlist, right? That might be like 20 different videos or 20 different versions of that wedding cake. Um, or you could say it's a, you know, whatever artistic cake. So those are all different like playlist ideas that you can create. Um, the other thing is you can also filter audience, right? So uh, if you have kid, you know, services or products that are geared for kids, you want to tick off that um, button on the bottom for audience. If there's no age restrictions, then you can leave that alone. That's some, like if you have content that's available for everybody and anybody can watch it, then you just leave that alone. All right. So this is a topic that we're gonna talk about in our uh, second workshop. So if you're interested in paid promotions, right? So you might've seen anytime you're watching a video on YouTube, uh, uh, you know, a couple five second ad usually pops up in the beginning of the video that you wanna watch, right? So this is all part of that placement. And then we also have the tags, which will help you get associated with the content that you're uh, uploading to YouTube. So. For example, bicycles or food or travel or business, uh, you want to make sure those tags are in here so that people can find your content easier. Um, if you have multiple languages, if you know that you have an audience base that's global, language subtitles, closed captioning, you want to upload them here. So if you have English speaking or maybe Chinese speaking or Spanish speaking uh, audience groups, you want to update those uh, items in this section. You can also make sure that people know where uh, where and when it was recorded, this video. So it might be an event. So if you're an event-based uh, business, this might be a good way to uh, incorporate those uh, details here. Moving right along, and here we have uh, about your license and distribution. So sometimes you're uh, showcasing video that could be licensed, right? With either vid, uh, uh, video content or music. Uh, a lot of times it's the music that gets a lot of content creators in a jam um, because they have to get the right license and, um, and whatnot. So make sure that is gonna be correct and also filled out there. Uh, you might allow other people to sample your content. So you wanna check off that box there. Um, and then here's another category for YouTube. Um, they have like about a few, I, I would say up to 20, I think different categories. Um, so that's also another way to help YouTube organize your content amongst all the videos that they have uploaded there. Um, and then also for comments and ratings, right? So this is a, a area where you can start filtering bad comments from your video or have no comments at all. Um, it really is dependent on you as the content creator, as the business, if you want people to start commenting on the video, um, there's the section for there if you want to disable that. And then moving right along. So the first section was all the details about the video. Second section is gonna be the video elements. Um, so you might've seen other videos where people have these like invisible boxes where they can click and they go to maybe the product or they go to a sign up page. Um, this is where you would kind of input those sections into your video. Um, it's just easy ways to do call to action um, and remind people, hey, you need to put this for the next video or you have to click on this to go to my you know, workshop sign up page. So this is where you would do that. And then right before you're about to upload or have it live on your YouTube channel, um, some people want to have it public. Some people want to have it unlisted. So unlisted is accessible by people from the public. However, you need to share that link with them. Uh, private is only for you and whoever you choose. So you will have to input their email and then they can view that video, but nobody else. So those are your three levels of visibility. Um, a lot of times we do this because uh, maybe it's a training video. The public doesn't really need to see that. So I'll put that as either private or unlisted. Um, 
other times maybe you're editing a video and you need to share it with somebody to approve or edit even further i would put it as an unlisted video share that link with them and then we would update and edit that video uh, and then you can also schedule so this is a great function that uh, was included into youtube a, a couple of years ago where uh, say for example you produce the video and you want to launch it on the weekend but guess what you're on vacation but with this function, you can actually have that video released at a certain time, right? So then you don't need to physically be here to actually press the button to say, oh, they launched the video live on my YouTube channel. So um, those are all the components of the uh, video uploading. Um, this is what you will see when you want um, your video published, and then you can share across different um, other mediums like Facebook, Twitter, on your blog page or on Reddit. Um, you have your easy uh, video uh, sharing link there as well. Um, so this really kind of concludes our workshop for the first part. Um, I wanna thank everybody who's on the workshop uh, right now, uh, who is able to join us. And uh, I'm going to also quickly, if we have one more minute to spare, uh, share with you the example of a fully completed channel with all the you know, creative assets and the description filled out and um, the different video ideas we talked about. So here's Glenn again with DIY Creators. Um, this is his channel, really clean banner on top here. Uh, great uh, profile image because it has his uh, branding here, DIY Creators and his face. So it's recognizable, it's easy to see and it's very, professionally done. Uh, this is his spotlight video, his feature video. So, you know, I'm coming to his channel. This is the first one I want, uh, first video I see, and it's intriguing enough for me to maybe watch that video further, right? So this is how to make an outdoor chair, right? Really nice description, I mean, uh, titling, and then really nice description. He's including links in there, so that's great. Um, you can go to pay playlists and you will see he has all these kind of organized into different sections. He has lamps, he has seating, he has, you know, homemade gems, restoration, LEDs, you know, the list goes on, but you can see what you can do with your YouTube channel. Um, depending on your business, you can create so many different playlists for all different types of audience groups and also customers. Um, the community section also something fairly new to YouTube. This is an area where you're kind of socializing with other content creators on YouTube. Um, as you can see here, um, this timeline feed, um, he's doing these DIY projects and you see a lot of people giving him likes and also commenting on them. So that's a great way to engage with your audience and potential customers. Th these are also his channels. So he has another one for uh, DIY creators Latino and then the automation guy. So these are all kind of branching off of his original content um, channel, DIY creators. Um, when you create your channel, always, always, always try to fill out this description. You see how well he does it here. So he tells you what videos he makes. He also tells you, um, you know, hey, you want to email me for any business inquiries? Let's do that. Uh, and then he also provides the other links. So he has an Instagram page and a Facebook page, as well as his other uh, DIY creators website. Um, th so that's wraps up our workshop today. Um, I really appreciate the time. And let's see if we have any questions we, uh, from the viewers today. If we can check out those questions. Um, so, uh, can everybody hear me? I guess I'm unmuted. Well, thank you so much for that terrific session, David. What I especially loved was that there was something for every every level of expertise, whether you were novice or a beginner kind of an expert, you had something that you could take away from the session, which is why I'm really excited, looking already looking forward to the second one. Um, we have a couple of questions from the audience and we can, you know, launch into taking, uh, you know, if you don't mind, we can just like straight away go into the section. Um, I can start with the first question here. Uh, it's from Destiny who wants to know, how do you know what video will up you upload 
will go viral? That's a great question. Uh, so yeah, a, a lot of my clients, uh, you know, everybody who's on social media or creating video content always wants, you know, hey, we're putting a lot of work into this video. I'm going to upload it and people are going to see it. And, um, you know, the, the notion of, hey, if this thing goes viral, I'll get a lot of people through my door. Like, you know, whether you have a, a, a brick and mortar shop and you, or a restaurant or an office and you want just people, a lot of eyeballs on your brand and your content. Um, there's no definitive way of knowing what is going to turn viral. However, you can definitely set yourself for success um, because there are times where, uh, you know, there's a cat video just drinking milk that could go viral and you're like, wait, but that was a, you know, 10 second video of a cat drinking milk. How did that go viral? It's really about timing and the, the, the subject matter that you're, you're, you're creating, right? Um, how can you connect with your audience? And that's one of the key things that, you know, so, so much of, uh, you know, the online content is around animals and maybe they're doing something crazy or they're, they're doing something cute um, and everybody resonates with that. So um, my, my answer to that is really, um, you can do the homework, right? Do some research to look at all the viral videos that are out, out there. And this is a one area um, for, you know, a business that you can kind of do a little copycatting, right? So if you see somebody uh, using a particular video, um, music video or uh, a particular like, you know, method of creating content, you could use that, get a little creative, modify it and produce your own content, right? And you put it out there and it's not to say like, oh, the first video you upload is going to go viral, but you need to be consistent. So um, always have, you know, the, 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 what do you call it, the grit to kind of put video out there so that it has the opportunity to go viral, right? There are some videos that have been posted a couple of years ago that didn't really get a lot of traction, but then somebody discovered it and then boom, you know, it goes viral, a million hits or whatnot. So um, you can only achieve that if you have video online. So for the folks that haven't started video, I highly recommend start posting video, uploading video so that you have the opportunity to go viral. Hopefully that answers the question. <laughs> oh, Jessica, you're, you're on mute. Oh, my bad. I'm so sorry yeah. about that. I was saying that was great. I've been interested in knowing how do you make something go viral? And I think that's the best way to answer it. You just have to be ready and show up and you never know it might happen. So we have a second question here. What is the preferred length for video durations? This is from Rachel. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, so the duration of videos, uh, I would say if you're starting out, uh, definitely try to be within, I would say five to 10 minutes. Uh, YouTube kind of flip-flopped a little bit. Um, they used to be, oh, we want content around 10 to 15 minutes or uh, for other content creators, they want it like hour long. So you might've noticed, um, you know, People are creating episodes, right? They're creating their own personal shows or they have their uh, video podcasts. Um, those go on for like, you know, anywhere between 30 minutes to a couple of hours. Um, and, you know, people are like, well, do I do that or do I do the short videos? It's really what you're comfortable with. But like, I would say in order for people to not get discouraged of uploading videos, start out small, right? See how well people receive your content and let the audience tell you, hey, we want an hour long video of you cooking, or, you know, I want to hear you talk to your customers, or I want you to show me this process. If that process takes an hour, then, you know, the video will be an hour long. But uh, I would start off with, you know, five to 10 minute long videos. Those are usually pretty good durations where people can uh, connect with you, both your brand and your personal brand. Uh, and then, you know, it gives you enough time to really talk about a subject matter that you're, you're passionate about. So, uh, I would say start off small five to 10 minutes and then slowly graduate to the longer form content, which Google, um, YouTube likes, uh, really well, because the, the longer people are on YouTube, the more money that they, they generate. So you got to sometimes play that game with them. But yeah, that's absolutely right. Um, so we have the third question here from Janice. 
how can I edit my video before uploading? That's great. Uh, thanks, Janice. Uh, so editing videos, um, there are several tools out there that are paid. There are some free editing uh, tools out there as well. So for most folks, um, I, I believe most folks would have a iPhone or Android phone. Um, they do have basic editing capabilities on your phone already for video. So whether you're trying to trim it or you want to add video, uh, you want to add music overlaid on the video, you can easily do that with your uh, cell phone. Uh, if you want something a little bit more robust, and uh, you say, "Hey, I would like," I see people having transitions or I, I see people with text over the video. Uh, one quick free hacky way of doing it is uh, actually through like TikTok or Instagram, right? Um, they allow you to record a video and then put, you know, stickers, they put text, they put transitions on them. Um, you don't necessarily have to upload that video to Instagram or TikTok. You can actually download that file that you created and then upload that video onto YouTube. Um, and that's your free kind of video editor tool. Uh, YouTube, the YouTube studio actually has a really uh, nice video e editing capability as well. You can upload all your videos and it has a, uh, a ribbon, right? Uh, similar to like the old school film, uh, how you can edit and splice and dice your video uh, clips together, uh, overlay with music and put text and, and so forth right in the YouTube channel dashboard. So uh, you have your options there. Uh, if you wanna get a little bit more uh, complex, uh, I would recommend Final Cut or Premiere Pro. Those are the professional tools uh, that you know the studios use to edit video, but that might be a little bit too much for like the folks that are beginning to get into video creation. But um, those are kind of universal tools that everybody uses um, for, doing content creation. Thank you, David. I feel that's all the time we have today, but I do have to say you're so great at taking all these questions and coming up with these amazing answers. It's like, you know, you didn't even need preparation. I am really looking forward to, you know, the second part because this has been so informative. And like I mentioned earlier, all levels of people can join this conversation, whether you're a novice or a beginner, you're an expert, intermediate. I myself, I'm an intermediate uh, sort of a level person with my YouTube channel. So I'm really looking forward to it. Um, thank you so much. Um, to everybody else tuned in we really hope you can join us then too and in the meantime you can stay connected with usp acc uh, we have a lot of um, programs that are lined up we have um, goldman sachs 10,000 small businesses roundtable grow with google workshops and the synergy forward celebration business development conference on which Admiratia is partnering with the USB ACC, which is coming soon in just a few weeks. So we really, if you're a small business, if you're a, a minority and diverse owned business, I just want to give you a shout out, check out Celebration. It's a great platform. Um, you can sign up and register and learn from these organizations, corporations, brands, Making connections is one of uh, the crucial things that as a small business we need and celebrations is really a celebration business development conference really doing that bringing small businesses together with the people that they need to be connected with. So thank you so much for this. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you next week, uh, 28th October, uh, yeah. same time, same place. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye.